Hi everyone, welcome to Paul's Hardware. Every month I do some parts lists for people who might want to build computers, and even though not many people want to do that right now, I'm going to do it anyway. I got an Intel build for about 540 bucks. I got an AMD build for about 640 bucks. You can add stupidly expensive graphics cards to those if you really, really want to. So stick around and I'm going to go over the parts. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by MSI's MPG Series Z590 motherboards, built for Intel 11th Gen Core processors. Whether you prefer the blacked out look of the Gaming Plus, the Wi-Fi 6E support of the Edge Wi-Fi, or the extra power for overclocking provided by the Z590 Force or the Carbon Wi-Fi, every board is packed with features like 2.5 gig LAN, 20 gigabit USB 3.2, Audio Boost 5, premium VRM cooling, and of course, PCI Express Gen 4 support with supplemental PCIe power. RGB2? Yes, RGB2. Click the sponsor link in the description for more on the MPG Z590 motherboards from MSI. I usually start off with a straw poll, getting some feedback from you guys. This was the one I did last month, and everyone seems to want some updates on my living room project, home theater, and shelves. I'm making zero promises there because I found that when I make promises about doing things, they, I don't always follow through with it, so I'm gonna stop doing that. I'll try, though. I'll try my best. Here's a straw poll for uh, next month. What do you builds do you want to see in October? Uh, do a build kind of like I'm already doing this month with a GPU even if it's overpriced or some other options there as well. Also, since I'm only going over parts list today, uh, check the description for links to my builds playlist if you want to see me build computers. Or I've got a beginner's guide playlist as well to walk you through the steps if you're a beginner. So my first build is a bring your own GPU build and I actually have two different variants of it. I've got an AMD version with a different CPU and motherboard than the Intel version. And the Intel version is actually a bit cheaper at about $540 and it also includes the 10400, which does have an iGPU. So you can build this system for 540 bucks. It's not gonna be the best for gaming using the Intel iGPU, but it is less expensive. And uh, comparatively to the AMD builds I have going today as well, it will be equivalent performance if you were to add a graphics card as well. Here's the 5600X, which is a CPU I'm basing it on. Uh, originally $300, it's dropped down to 273, which makes it a bit better of a deal and also makes it probably a better option than the 5600G if you have a graphics card to work with. And that is what I'm assuming for this first build is that you have a GPU to use to drop in, whether it's an older one or a newer one that you managed to pick up. Uh, the 5600X and a discrete GPU is definitely a better option than the 5600G. I have a motherboard for the AMD variant of the build which is the MSI B550M Pro VDH. Note that these are all micro ATX builds that I'm assembling today. You could of course go full ATX with a larger size motherboard, but uh, you'll probably spend a few more bucks for that. This one's only $110, notably cheaper than than the Mag Bazooka B550M board from last month because that one went up to $120. And this one also has uh, built-in Wi-Fi, which is a nice uh, added bonus, especially if you need Wi-Fi. You might consider Intel as well right now, especially if you're actually looking for a less expensive option. And the i5-10400 is a solid choice. That's a six core, 12 thread processor, just like the 5600G and 5600X. And it's only $175 right now. Note that this is just the 10400, not the 10400F, which means this also has integrated graphics and it runs at the same speeds as the 10400F and it's like a few bucks, it's like $3 cheaper than the 10400F right now. So for my money, I would absolutely go with the 10400 over the 10400F simply because you'd have that iGPU as an option to use for troubleshooting or if you needed to get by without a graphics card for a little bit. I also have a couple choices for motherboards to pair with that 10400. I've got the MSI B460M, which is $109. It's got the basic features you would want uh, on a budget board like all four DIMM slots not to cut down to two. It actually has some cooling on the VRMs and it has a decent VRM solution. Got a couple M.2 slots in there as well. One of those slots is also compatible with SATA M.2 devices, which uh, might give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of uh, the storage that you might add on. And then we've also got this one, uh, which is currently back ordered on Newegg, but it should be back in stock fairly soon. It says the ETA is 910. This is the ASRock B560M Pro 4AC. It also has integrated Wi-Fi, and it's a little bit nicer than the MSI board. It does have uh, an M.2 heatsink. It has some RGB on the board. It also has RGB headers. The MSI board also has RGB headers if you just want to use it to control RGB. This one actually even has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header, which is uh, not something you usually see 
on the more budget-oriented boards. From there, I have a couple memory choices for you, and I went with Samsung B Die Memory because it's only about $10 more expensive than the non-Samsung B Die Memory. And especially for AMD, this makes sure that your memory is gonna plug in and work right off the bat. And I did have a slight issue with the memory kit from last month when I actually tested that system out. But this is G-Skills Rip Jaws 5 memory, which isn't that flashy or anything, but it is black, so it blends in pretty well. It's the 16 gigabyte kit, it's DDR4 3200, and it's cast latency 14. So DDR4 3200 CL14 is gonna be roughly equivalent to CL16 DDR4 3600 memory. This other kit is a Trident Z kit. It is gray and red, so that may or may not match, but uh, we're doing budget builds here, so we're not too focused on aesthetics. This might be a better choice for AMD builds simply because plugging in your DDR4 3600 XMP values will also set your Infinity Fabric clock to the same frequency that the memory is running at, um, which is a, a more ideal solution. This one's cast latency 17, just a tick behind uh, the CL16 stuff, but it is still Samsung B die based memory, so that's why I chose it. And this one is $100, so this is the less expensive of the two kits I've chosen. The rest of the parts are all stuff that you may have seen before, well, especially if you watched last month's video. The Thermaltake Versa H18, I just find to be a really great entry-level case, especially if you're okay with micro ATX. It's only $55. It comes with at least a single 120 millimeter fan for a little bit of airflow right off the bat. It's got a nice open mesh front panel so you can add some more fans uh, for some more airflow if you need to. Nothing too fancy aside from that, but again, you're paying $55, so that's that's the selling point there. I also use the same 512 gig SLC cache uh, NVMe M.2 SSD from Team Group, which has actually also dropped in price by four or five dollars. It's down to 49. This is again something to get you up and running with a 512 gig capacity. It's got much better than SATA read and write speeds, but it is still a relatively entry level NVMe drive, but I think it's a good choice again if you're just starting out. And finally for a power supply we have the EVGA uh, BQ600. It's a 600 BQ. It's 80 plus bronze rated for efficiency. It actually is partially modular, so that gives you a little bit more flexibility with the cables that you plug in. All the cables are black and so they will blend in with the rest of your build. And it was $55 this morning, but now it's 60 so this went up by $5, but still a solid choice even for $60. Do note that EVGA has some of their power supplies on their website that are priced at $70 or $80, bucks, but they have $20 or $30 mail-in rebates, so I would double check over there because EVGA has solid power supplies, and if you're okay with a mail-in rebate, you can get some good deals on some other units. So there's a couple baseline builds for you. Do note, again, that the AMD build with the 5600X, you would need a discrete graphics card in order to use. The Intel build with the 10400, you could use out of the box by using the integrated GPU and the video outs that are on the motherboard, but both of these builds are designed to be able to drop in a discrete graphics card like a, a 6600 XT or an RTX 3060 if you can find them at reasonable prices. And that is what I have done for our next build. Build number two is basically the first build, but add a graphics card in and I'm gonna assume that you're buying it at retail, which means you're gonna spend more than what MSRP is supposed to be. I do wanna point out that there are alternative options for buying a graphics card right now that you should definitely check out if you're trying to save money. It's just harder for me to recommend those because they fluctuate a lot. So definitely checking out the secondary market uh, sites like eBay or apps like OfferUp or even local Craigslist ads. Just, you know, always be safe when you're buying uh, used parts. You can watch the restock checkers to see when stuff actually comes in stock at different retailers or you can try out the Newegg Shuffle and see if you maybe get lucky. We've even seen stuff like Best Buy advertising that they have a bunch of GPUs coming in on a specific date and that people have gone and lined up to get graphics cards and that's been a fairly reasonable option as well if you have the time to go and wait in line. Micro Center also seems to have graphics cards in stock in store, although the prices are not the best compared to what MSRP is supposed to be. That said, to check what the current best prices are at retail, if you just wanna go and buy right now, I used PC Part Picker, and I put a link to that down in the video's description if you're not familiar with it. And I've just gone to their video cards page and I'm just uh, checking out each type of GPU, like the uh, RTX 3090, the highest end, currently from NVIDIA, which the cheapest option is currently $2,880. Likewise, if we look at 3080 Ti's, the cheapest one is $1,900. If we look at 3080's, the cheapest one is much more expensive. So do note that while all of these are bad prices, none of these are, are, are good prices, some of them are much worse than others. Like a 3070 Ti can be had for 1330, which means you probably shouldn't buy a 3070 for 1650. Likewise, a 3080 Ti can be had for as little as, as little as 19 so definitely shouldn't buy a 3080 non-TI for 2350. Don't even bother with 3060 TIs because none of those are in stock anywhere at all, but the 3060 is the 
least expensive at $768. And do note that the MSRP there is 330. That's for this Zotac Gaming Edge RTX 3060. And uh, actually the price has dropped down to $758, dropped by about 10. There, I fixed it. Still over double MSRP, but if you wanted a current gen card and you wanted to order it right now from a site like Amazon, that's what you have to pay. Now, a few people will say that I should check the 20 series or the, yeah, the RTX 20 series, like the 2070 Super uh, as well. But I would say that if you're looking at retail, you're not gonna find good choices for that either. A 2070 Super is going to be faster than an RTX 3060, and it looks like you could get one for $617 here. But note that this is listed as usually ships within five months. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of you are a little bit more antsy to get a gaming graphics card than that. And of course, the next cheapest one is three times the price at well over $1,800, which is obviously not a reasonable deal at all for a 2070 Super. So the older cards are probably only worth it if you're finding secondhand cards for reasonable prices. And you should always reality check that against what cards are actually selling for, but then if we look at the AMD side, we actually have a couple options potentially as well, like the Sapphire Nitro uh, RX 6600 XT, which launched uh, fairly recently. This has an MSRP of 380. This is actually less than double MSRP, which it's weird to say that that sounds almost kind of good. And although there are only three left in stock, according to Amazon, you can actually buy this right now for $700. Well, the delivery will take a little bit. I also found a 6700 XT for as little as $950, but this would mean that the cheapest quote unquote reasonable uh, card that you can buy at retail right now that's current gen is the 6600 XT for $700, followed somewhat closely by the 3060, which you should note is a slower card than the 6600 XT when it comes to straight up gaming performance, is about 60 bucks more than that at 758. Of course, you could add either of those to the Intel build or the AMD build that I did for build number one, and that would bring the grand total up to uh, 1200 to 1300-ish dollars, as you can see right there. Build number three is very, very similar to the build from last month that I did in August, but uh, it is still a very viable build, and this uses the 5600G, so if you know that you're probably not gonna be able to get a graphics card for a month or two months or three months or more, and you do wanna do a little bit of light gaming, the 5600G can game uh, decently capably on the integrated graphics, and that's $260 MSRP for that. So if you are gonna use the iGPU, that makes this a more viable option. The total for this build right now is $625. But I did swap out a few parts from last month. Uh, the list again is down in the description. It's mostly the same, and that's a reasonable price, I think, for an entry-level PC that you can actually game on. Just don't try to build it in the G-Skill Z5i case that I also used last month because the, it didn't perform very well. Anyway though, I have one last final sort of build that I actually am probably going to be building at the end of this month because In the meantime though, you can check the video description down below for links to the other builds that I talked about today, which are a little bit more on the reasonably priced side of things. And hopefully that helps you guys out, especially any of you who are looking to build a system and need to get something up and running sooner rather than later. Because you might also keep in mind that in probably November or December, Intel is launching a brand new platform with their Alder Lake desktop CPUs. And probably in early 2022, AMD is coming out with their AM5 platform. So the builds that are being built right now will eventually be supplanted by those in terms of what the latest and greatest actually is. But that's all for this video, you guys. And again, links are down in the video's description. You can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video while you're down there. Maybe subscribe to my channel if you like seeing videos about technology and PC builds. And we'll see you all in the next video.